So it's my great pleasure to uh, introduce uh, Professor Samuel Wu, uh, Wu Xiuguang, Wu Xiuguang Jiao Hong. Uh, and I'll say a little bit more about him in a minute. But just first of all, on the subject, I'm glad we've got a reasonable turn up here because cross strait relations are obviously hugely important. Now, it goes without saying that for people who live in Taiwan, they're absolutely fundamental. They're, it's an existential issue. But it's not much short of that for Australia, too, particularly people like me. I've had somewhat amphibious existence uh, moving between uh, government and university, mainly in government, but more recently in university. When we think about what most determines Australia's strategic circumstances for better or for ill, uh, for quite some time now, it's been the state of relations between the People's Republic of China and the United States. And in that, Taiwan plays an absolutely crucial role. And we've had periods of uh, considerable tension. We've had periods which have been somewhat more relaxed. But it's an issue that uh, is certainly not going to go away, so continues to be of great importance, of course, apart from the, the, the strategic and the economic uh, interest that Australia has involved in that. There are, there are broader moral and, and political and ethical issues as well. Uh, but I'll leave uh, the subject uh, quite properly to Professor Wu. But I said I was a somewhat am uh, amphibious in terms of my career, but I'm amphibious, I, I, I'm at a loss for words to describe uh, Professor Wu because he seems to have done absolutely everything. He's been involved in administration, he's been involved in real politics as Deputy Mayor of Taipei, he's been involved in scholarship, he's been a, a political scientist but also a politician, uh, he's been involved in, in business and investment. There seem to be very few things that he hasn't done. Um, and although this is his first visit to Canberra, as he's just uh, confessed, he has been to Australia on quite a few occasions before too, so he's no stranger to our shores. And I think he also understands, therefore, why this issue is of considerable importance to people in Australia, as well as people in the wider world, and most especially in Taiwan. So, Professor Wu, I would... Uh, like to invite you to come and make your presentation. The words are very carefully chosen. We discussed this last night. The perspectives of cross-strait relations, an analytical framework, and its implications. So that should give us plenty to go on with until 3 o'clock. We'll have the presentation, and then, depending on how much time we have, we'll have uh, Q&A. So, Professor. Thank you. Uh, thank you, thank you for the introduction, and uh, uh, thank you for everybody for coming. Uh, it's my uh, greatest honor to be invited to this particular conference and to be the keynote speaker of this session. And uh, I would like to take this opportunity uh, to appreciate the Australian Center on China in the World and the Academia Sinica and the Taipei Economic and Cultural Office in Australia and the, uh, uh, the Lin Pengyuan Cultural and Educational Foundation uh, for putting together all these efforts and to put this uh, conference together and uh, invited me here. <coughs> uh, the topic I would like to uh, discuss about uh, is the perspectives of cross-strait relations. And uh, what I'm trying to do here is to provide an analytical framework and then discuss about uh, the implication of that particular analytical framework. I have to admit that I, I'm no fortune teller, so I don't know what's going to happen uh, one or two years from now uh, between uh, Taiwan and China. Uh, and neither, I, 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 I don't hold a, a governmental position now, so I don't have the uh, necessary data that I need to fit into my analytical uh, model uh, to make a very precise prediction of what may happen in the future. <laughs> so uh, in this particular discussion, what I'm trying to do is just to provide an, an analytical framework and then try to uh, uh, apply uh, the analytical framework and, and, and to use the limited uh, data that I have and to uh, have some uh, gestures and to have some guess about what may happen. So there, there will be a lot of if and then, uh, or if and if and then. So 
Uh, that's uh, what I'm going to report to you. So, uh, the, uh, uh, so, and before that, I would like to uh, also discuss a little bit about myself. Actually, now I'm no, uh, I'm not a, uh, uh, the uh, uh, full-time professor at the university anymore. I now uh, uh, serve as the chairperson of an international investment uh, private equity fund. And, uh, uh, and then before that, I served as the deputy mayor of Taipei. And then before that, I actually uh, taught at the uh, National Change University. And before that, I actually uh, had a chance to, to teach at the, uh, uh, in the United States. I, uh, teach at, I taught at the uh, Texas A&M University, and uh, I also served as an assistant researchers at the uh, Hoover Institution uh, back to many years ago. And uh, uh, the, the funny things about uh, my change of jobs is that I found that uh, in my current job, the, uh, I actually concerned even more about uh, the future. Uh, the, uh, uh, because uh, what happened in the future uh, may have a tremendous influence on the future of my job. So I have to, <laughs> so I have to uh, uh, try to make it right, and and that's exactly the reason why I try to come up with an uh, analytical framework uh, to help me to organize all the information that I gathered and, and try to make sense out of the uh, out of those information. <clears throat> so, what's going to happen in the, uh, in the prospect relations in the near uh, years to come? We have to look back a little bit. Uh, the security environment in Asia actually has undergone major changes in the, past, uh, in the last few years and may uh, face even greater change in the near future, I think. <clears throat> and the most relevant one uh, to the cross-strait relations is the succession of power uh, by uh, Xi Jinping as China's new leader. Uh, after she took the new position as the president of PRC, uh, he was able to consolidate his power almost immediately by taking the military chief job and also initiate major crackdown uh, on uh, those corrupt uh, high rank officers at the same time. So apparently that he will be the one who is in charge uh, for mainland China for, uh, for the cross strait relations for many years to come. <clears throat> However, uh, the, uh, we will see later in the, uh, uh, in the framework that he is constrained by many structural factors. For example, he will certainly be constrained by China's domestic stability and the rise of nationalism in China. And the greater the instability and the rise of radical nationalism in China, the less room uh, Xi Jinping will have to compromise with the uh, for example, a pro-independent Taiwanese leader. <clears throat> Xi's decision may also interact with the decision by the United States, uh, the United States leaders and the Taiwanese leaders. <clears throat> if Xi expects a much friendly relations with Taiwan due to a much compromising Taiwanese leaders in the future, for example, uh, then he will be less likely to take assertive actions against Taiwan currently. So we are going to take a very dynamic view of what's going on in this period of time and what's going to uh, influence uh, uh, to the next period of time. <clears throat> and on the contrary, if he expects a very negative cross-strait relations in the future, then the chance for him to take a hostile action against Taiwan then is increased. <clears throat> and similarly, uh, the possible change of national leadership in Taiwan in 2016 will also be a significant factor to the future of the cross-strait relations. <clears throat> if a new KMT leader is elected as the successor of President Ma, then it is more than likely that Ma's current rapprochement uh, policy will be continued. However, if a DPP leader is elected as <coughs> president, for example, if Tsai Ing-wen was elected, <clears throat> then it will, be, it will create great uncertainties to the future of the relations. <clears throat> Uh, the possible influence of the new DPP leaders to the cross-strait relations 
may not have to wait until the actual leadership change in 19, uh, 2016. Since the uh, KMT has al already lost uh, the 9-in-1 uh, local election in, uh, this year, uh, last year in such a dramatic way, uh, the signaling effect of the event is strong enough for the Chinese leader to take some pre preventive actions. <clears throat> for example, mainland China may uh, make stronger efforts to interact with selected DPP elites uh, to push a new China policy uh, from DPP and to pressure the current KMT government to, re uh, to reach further agreement so that the trend of rapprochement become irreversible. <clears throat> so uh, then to what extent uh, in my discussion I will try to discuss the following questions. To what extent the cross-strait relations will be influenced by the transition of leadership in China and in Taiwan? And what will the leader be constrained? Uh, will, will all these leaders be constrained by the already existed structural factors? Or he or she is more of a determinant factor to the future of the cross-strait relations? <laughs> and what are those structural factors? And in what way those factors will shape the future of the cross-strait relations? And what are the strate uh, strategies of the relevant leaders may do to best serve their respective interests? <coughs> These are the questions I would try to discuss and, uh, in this particular draft. But because of the limit of time, I will concentrate my uh, last part of the analysis on what China may do. Uh, according to this particular uh, uh, analytical framework. So uh, let's take a look of the, uh, uh, the uh, analytical framework first. <coughs> OK. So if we take a look of the literatures that discuss about the cross-strait relations, we're going to find that uh, the literature will concentrate the discussion on the following three categories of factors. Uh, the first category is the international system factors. I will explain uh, what they are and what does it mean uh, a little bit later. And the second one is the interactive factors between the two sides of the strait. <clears throat> and the third one is the linkage factor of the domestic politics to the cross strait relations. <clears throat> it means that the uh, uh, the linkage between domestic politics and their interactive uh, the, uh, decisions. <clears throat> and the most, uh, among all these three categories of factors, the most direct factors should be the uh, interactions between the two governments leased by their respective <coughs> leaders. For example, uh, the current, uh, the recent rapprochement between the two has been the direct result of the change of national leadership uh, in Taiwan in 2008 uh, when Ma took the office. And the expectation that things may get in better by the Mandarin Chinese leadership is apparently a significant factor that convinced them to make economic concessions uh, to Taiwan on the negotiation table in the last few years. However, the, uh, uh, the political leaders of both sides are constrained uh, by the uh, international system factors and their domestic politics. Many Chinese leaders may want to uh, take strong negative actions against a pro-independent Taiwanese leader. But if the United States in, is in support of Taiwan <coughs> strongly, and then uh, the China's move is constrained, and the, uh, the, the, the relations among these factors may be illustrated uh, in, the, in, in this particular uh, figure. <clears throat> so let's take a look of uh, uh, this particular uh, illustration. Uh, the factors uh, actually can be summarized and, uh, and operationalized as the following. Uh, if we take a look, oh, sorry. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh, the dependent variable we try to explain is the uh, cross-strait interactions. <coughs> and I have to remind everybody that uh, uh, I, I try to make this particular uh, analytical framework a dynamic one instead of a static one. So uh, the, 
interaction of the previous period uh, may have a feedback effect uh, to the model and then influence the next stage of the interactions. <coughs> but uh, what would be the uh, prostrate interactions uh, as a dependent variable? Uh, they are the direct uh, result of the uh, uh, decisions uh, by the Chinese leaders and the Taiwanese leaders. <coughs> and I would like to operationalize their decision as the following. Uh, in the, from the China, uh, Chinese leaders' side, I would say is the level of assertiveness against Taiwan. <coughs> because uh, we all know that China, uh, uh, the, the ultimate goal for China to, uh, to push their cross-strait relations is to reunify uh, with uh, Taiwan. <clears throat> That's the ultimate goal. And then from Taiwan's part, I believe that uh, Taiwan, Taiwanese leaders' decision can be operationalized as the, uh, uh, the level of independent against uh, China. <clears throat> but the, uh, these two decisions will uh, the, uh, uh, have the most direct uh, result uh, to the cross-strait interactions. But the, uh, they are constrained by uh, the uh, two uh, categories of variables. Let's take a look at the, uh, oh, sorry, the one in the above, the international factors. The international factors can be summarized and operationalized simply as the United States support to Taiwan. Uh, although a lot of other many countries support to Taiwan is, are also important. But uh, the most crucial one, uh, and uh, the, most, the one that can be operationalized uh, the most easily, is the, uh, the US support to Taiwan. <clears throat> and then in turn, uh, the, uh, the US support to Taiwan uh, uh, will be influenced by two uh, factors, uh, two variables. The first one is the power balance between US and China. And the second one is the strategic interdependence between the United States and, uh, and China. <clears throat> so, the, uh, uh, for example, the, uh, the, the, inter, uh, the interactions of later two variables will determine the current form of the cross-strait relations. And the current form of cross-strait relations will signal uh, to both political leaders what to expect in the future uh, from their counterpart. And then many Chinese leaders will concentrate uh, its concerns on whether Taiwan will get closer to Taiwan's goal of, uh, 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 China's goal of reunification. And Taiwanese leaders will concentrate its concerns on whether China will become more democratized so that Taiwan will be less threatened by a stronger and wealthier China. Uh, since uh, we all notice that Taiwan seldom worry about a stronger United States or a, a stronger Japan. Why Taiwan would worry so much about a stronger China? I think it's because uh, the, uh, uh, China is basically not a democratic regime. If China become a democra democratized regime, just like uh, Taiwan or United States or Japan, uh, the, uh, uh, it will fit with Taiwanese leaders' uh, concerns much better. <clears throat> so, let's take a look at the interactive factors. Uh, as mentioned above, the respective uh, future expectation of Chinese leaders and Taiwanese leaders toward one another will have an important impact on their current decisions. <clears throat> if Chinese leaders believe that the future cross-strait relations is headling to the better, then he or she is less likely to take hostile actions now. Uh, similarly, if Taiwanese leaders believe that China, China's political system will be more and more democratized, then therefore become more and more like that of the uh, Taiwanese system, then he or she, uh, the Taiwanese leader in the future, is less worried about Taiwan become too dependent on China. <coughs> and uh, a lot of scholars mentioned about this. <coughs> However, if Chinese leaders believe that things is getting worse, and then he or she is more likely to take hostile actions against Taiwan, especially if Chinese leaders believe that time is not on China's side, and if 
the longer they wait, and then the less likely that China will have the chance to move things back to the track. And then uh, the Chinese leaders may maybe feel compelled to take strong preemptive actions uh, in uh, the current year. <coughs> so that's the things that we have to pay attention to. And then let's take a look of the, uh, the third categories of uh, the uh, uh, factors, that's the uh, domestic factors, and then think about how these domestic factors will link uh, to the uh, uh, cross-strait interactions. <coughs> the Chinese leaders' decision uh, is certainly constrained, just like we mentioned a little bit earlier, that uh, China's domestic stability. <coughs> And also, uh, it will be influenced by the, uh, China's development of nationalism in China. Uh, scholars like uh, uh, Mavano and uh, Suang all mentioned about this. And then, the Chinese leader's uh, perception of its military readiness against Taiwan uh, is another uh, important variable. The stronger the race of China's nationalism in domestic politics, the less room its leader has when confronting against a perceived hostile actions against China, <coughs> such as a Taiwanese move toward independence. <coughs> However, Chinese leaders' willingness to take assertive action against Taiwan is apparently uh, conditioned by its perceived military balance and readiness against Taiwan. Uh, the China's domestic stability uh, and, and also constrained uh, and conditioned by China's domestic stability. The stronger the Chinese-Taiwanese military balance in favor of China, then the more likely that Chinese leadership will take strong ex actions against uh, Taiwan when the moment is needed. <coughs> and then, so, uh, all these domestic factors then will uh, all have impact on the leader's decision and then have an uh, impact on the interaction. And the interaction of the current uh, the period will have an important influence on the next period of interactions. <laughs> so that's the, uh, uh, how this particular uh, model works. But uh, we should take a closer look of the, uh, uh, the linkage politics itself. Uh, there is a, what we call a two-level game uh, and a loop of influence and interactions uh, among the three major players uh, here in the cross-strait relations, uh, Taiwan, China, and the United States. Uh, the, here, Uh, I try to use the, what we call the principal agent theories uh, uh, to help us to understand uh, what's, uh, what's the interaction between the two collectives, uh, Taiwan and China. <coughs> uh, the Taiwanese leaders is, I, I have to apologize that the direction of the error is, uh, is wrong, but I'll explain a little bit later. <coughs> uh, the Chinese uh, political leaders is selected or authorized by uh, the Taiwanese domestic mechanism, which is the uh, democratic elections. So why, for example, President Ma can represent tai uh, Taiwan to negotiate with China? Because he is elected as the president. And it's, he is authorized <coughs> by the uh, Taiwanese domestic uh, mechanism. And, 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 and at the same time, Chinese political leader is also produced or, uh, or authorized by the Chinese domestic uh, uh, mechanism. Uh, the two mechanisms may be different. Uh, the one in Taiwan may be much more democratic, uh, uh, much more a democratic one, and the uh, uh, the one in China may be much more of an authoritarian one. Uh, it will be a a decision among a very small group of uh, the Central Committee members. <laughs> but no matter what, uh, the leader is produced uh, by a, a mechanism domestically. After he was elected as the leader, then he will be the agent 
uh, for the collectives to negotiate with the, another uh, political leader. But no matter what result uh, come, out, come, up, come out of the uh, negotiation between the two leaders, they will still have to bring back uh, the draft of the negotiation agreement back and for the uh, ratification uh, by uh, their <coughs> principles. So for example, uh, the service and the, uh, 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 the uh, 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 PAC, uh, the uh, agreement reached by China and Taiwan last year, uh, was still waiting for the ratific uh, ratification in the uh, le legislative yen in Taiwan. And uh, so we see that uh, even you come up with the outcome out of the negotiation, it's not the end of the story. You still have to bring back that particular uh, tentative agreement uh, for the ratification of uh, your principles back, back home. And that's also the case uh, in China. So uh, in that case, uh, later if I have time and if uh, some, uh, s some of you among the audience would like to know a little bit more about the details of the uh, two-level game analysis. I, 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 I would try to uh, illustrate that uh, on the board, but uh, at this point, I, I think I'd better skip that part. <laughs> but no matter what, among the factors mentioned above, uh, the uh, some can be manipulated by political leaders, and some are not. Among those factors that can be manipulated, uh, political leaders will choose those most effective and efficient ones uh, as priorities. So, the, uh, uh, in this particular figure, for example, uh, the, chi the, the Chinese leaders, when they try to influence uh, Taiwanese, uh, Taiwanese leaders' decision, they may not uh, have to deal with Chinese, uh, Taiwanese leaders directly. One possible, one possible way is to uh, try to influence the Taiwanese domestic uh, mechanism uh, indirectly, and then uh, try to influence this part and then have an Im uh, impact on the Taiwanese leader's uh, decision. <laughs> and so that's the reason why we start to observe that a lot of uh, Chinese leaders uh, go to the southern part of Taiwan and try to make friends with a lot of uh, uh, DPP leaders and also make friends with a lot of uh, the uh, 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 the uh, residents in the southern part of uh, Taiwan. I think that's all their uh, strategy, try to influence uh, the uh, Taiwanese domestic mechanism and then have an indirect uh, influence on Taiwanese leaders' decision. And actually, Taiwanese leaders can do the same thing, although uh, it will be much more diff uh, much difficult uh, for Taiwanese to do that. But uh, one possible way of doing that is to uh, try to, just like what uh, Professor Shaw uh, said yesterday, uh, if we can make the, the level of, of democratization in China uh, increased, and then uh, it will create a better environment uh, for Taiwan in the future. <laughs> so, as, demonstrate, as demonstrated uh, by this particular figure, the political leaders uh, is the perspective agent of the uh, collective body, and he or she is authorized by the respective principles through the state's uh, respective authorization mechanism. And after the authorization, such as an election uh, as, uh, elected as the president, the leader then is empowered to negotiate with its counterpart. However, if the tentative agreement can be reached between uh, one leader and uh, another one, and then the agreement will still require the ratification from the principles through each collective's uh, respective ratification mechanism. So, for example, just like uh, what I mentioned earlier, the trade and service pact uh, agreed by the uh, Hai Ji Hui and the uh, Hai Xie Hui. Uh, the SEF and the ARATS is still waiting for the ratification 
from the uh, le legislative yuan in Taiwan. And so therefore, to a political leader, there are several different ways to influence uh, another political leader's decision. He or she is able to influence the other leaders by the direct interactions of negotiation. But he, can, he or she can also try to influence the other side by indirect interactions with the principles of the other side's authorization mechanism and through its relations with the third collectives. <coughs> so, if the, uh, uh, after we understand all these uh, factors, and the, uh, from my, some of my previous analysis, I found that uh, uh, an interesting thing about the linkage politics is that uh, sometimes uh, the internal or domestic conflict uh, uh, may not be a bad thing uh, for a particular collective. For example, when there is an a argument inside of Taiwan about whether, to what extent, we should uh, uh, reapproach uh, with China, the kind of argument inside of Taiwan may not be a bad thing for Taiwan because that would convince or the uh, uh, persuade Chinese leaders to, uh, to give him more. <coughs> uh, you know, uh, in, in Taiwan, sometimes a lot of uh, uh, husbands will drink together. And uh, one negotiation that usually happens on the dinner table is try to convince another guy to drink more. <laughs> but then, uh, if somebody asks me to drink more, and if I can successfully convince him that I have a very uh, strong wife and uh, against, against me and not to allow me to, to drink too much. And if everybody believes that's true, and then I will have a better chance not to drink that much. <laughs> okay, so uh, the, the similar logic also applies here. So when there is a very strong opposition inside of Taiwan, <clears throat> sometimes on the negotiation table between Taiwan and China, actually, that may not be a bad thing. <clears throat> so, what's the implication uh, after we understand these three categories of factors? <clears throat> and uh, I would like to concentrate my discussion uh, on what China may do according to uh, the framework and the two-level game. <clears throat> so, the, uh, the, actually, Again, I would discuss about what China may do according to the three categories of variables and uh, to discuss about them uh, from the three perspec uh, uh, perspectives. <clears throat> so, in general, the new Chinese leaders may be able to influence the future relations according to the map of influence and interaction loops uh, just illustrated earlier, <clears throat> but still constrained by the variables mentioned in the analytical framework. So, uh, the, uh, what Chinese leader may do, first, let's take a look at the uh, international aspect. I think uh, the first thing that they may do is try to create a better strategic relations with the United States, so as to reduce uh, the U.S. support to a Taiwan. And we have already observed a lot of that. <laughs> the, uh, for example, uh, the, the two leader, leaders uh, just reached uh, quite a few uh, strategic agreement on environmental protections and on many other things. <clears throat> and then the second thing that may happen is for the Chinese leaders uh, to influence the United States <coughs> is to establish a stronger alliances with the Russia uh, to constrain the U.S. from its strategic maneuvers in Asia. <clears throat> and we also have already observed a lot of that. <clears throat> The, uh, uh, the, not only when she took the office, uh, the, he went to Russia for, to pay his first visit as the uh, uh, national leader. <clears throat> uh, it's a very good sign of what he tried to do in this particular aspect. <clears throat> and then the third thing that he may do is to continue to strengthen China's military power to counterbalance the U.S. military presence in Asia 
and its possible intervention into the Cross Strait conflict. So that's uh, several things that the China may do. And what China may do in the interactive aspect, one of the things that they may do is to structure a stronger framework for past uh, 2016 cross strait relations so that even with the change of the leadership uh, from the KMT to the DPP, the current relations cannot be reversed. <laughs> so they will try to push the things uh, over uh, to a particular uh, threshold so that even with uh, the change of leadership in Taiwan in 2016, uh, things cannot be reversed. For example, uh, to establish an institutional arrangement between the AR, uh, the Hai Xiehui and the Hai Jihui to have uh, uh, the uh, uh, institutional uh, discussion and institutional arrangement uh, between the two uh, mechanisms. <clears throat> And the second thing that they may do is to initiate sensitive talk with Taiwan, such as the uh, uh, confidence building mechanism, and or even try to initiate uh, political talks. <coughs> and uh, as we all know that actually, uh, uh, by 1.5 track or even uh, the second track of uh, dialogue, uh, the two sides uh, try very hard to explore the possibilities. Uh, however, uh, uh, the chance for a very uh, visible agreement to be reached uh, in these two fronts uh, is uh, it's limited in the near future. <coughs> the third one is try to have a breakthrough with Taiwan before the end of Mao's second term. <coughs> Uh, since Mao's second term, uh, there are only about a little bit more than one year <coughs> left. And I think, uh, the, especially after uh, the defeat uh, in the previous election, uh, the chance for this to happen is also slim. <coughs> but no matter what, uh, a, a possible breakthrough is still, I believe, on China, Chinese leaders' agenda. <coughs> And then, uh, what about the domestic aspect, uh, both uh, in Chinese domestic and in Taiwanese domestic uh, aspect? <coughs> I think the Chinese leaders may do is to establish a better connection with the new generation of leaders in KMT. Uh, the Ma is on his way out, <coughs> and then the new generation of KMT leaders is coming in. And it is very important for the Chinese leader to uh, connect and to build the new connections with those new generations of leaders in KMT. And at the same time, uh, they also will try very hard to establish a better dialogue with the possible leaders in DPP. Uh, actually, this has already happened. Uh, the, no matter as uh, the local leaders, such as uh, Chen Chui and uh, uh, Lai uh, Sizhang uh, of the uh, Tainan city. They're also uh, uh, contacted by the uh, uh, Chinese leadership and try to build a uh, dialogue and uh, try to build a better mutual understanding uh, between them. And the third thing is to establish a stronger business, cultural, uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, connections with various levels of Taiwanese society. Uh, and the fourth thing is to prepare to influence the result of the uh, 2016 elections. <coughs> uh, although they know this is very difficult, but I still believe that they will try to do that. And, uh, and one of the things that they may do uh, is not to <coughs> influence Taiwan directly, but try to influence Taiwan's election through the United States. <clears throat> and uh, so if they will be able to reach a better understanding about what the cross-strait relation should be with the United States, and uh, <coughs> there is a pos it is possible for them and try to convince the United States leaders uh, to have an indirect uh, influence on uh, Taiwanese 2016 uh, presidential elections. <clears throat> and
And the fifth one is to prevent its domestic rates of nationalism from out of control. So these are the few things uh, that the Chinese leaders will have uh, in mind <laughs> about both uh, the Taiwanese and the uh, uh, Chinese domestic uh, uh, variables, Th the things that we will try to control and try to manipulate and try to uh, uh, or try to influence. <laughs> so uh, the uh, uh, if we go back to the previous line, you are going to see that the Chi China's actions can be actually demonstrated along the time. Uh, 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 in these particular illustrations. So uh, he will try to uh, not only influence uh, the leaders of the other side, but also try to influence uh, the uh, domestic mechanism and try to influence who is going to be the next leaders. <coughs> and uh, he, he can also uh, do this by influence the United States and have an indirect influence on China's uh, domestic mechanism, and then uh, have an impact on the uh, who is going to be the next Taiwanese leaders, and then have the impact on what interaction uh, will be in the near future. <coughs> so it's a very complicated uh, loop of influence and interactions, <coughs> as illustrated here. Then if we have all this uh, framework in mind, <coughs> then actually what we can do is to uh, we'll go, come back here a little bit later but this, this is going to be a very difficult uh, table to, to read <laughs> but I, I'll explain a little bit what it is about uh, so actually what I, what I did is to put <laughs> all those uh, three aspects of variables uh, on, a <laughs> on a timeline, <laughs> okay? So the timeline is from 2013 uh, all the way to uh, 20 something like 2017. <clears throat> and then along the timelines, uh, what you can do is to have all these three aspects of variables uh, here <laughs> and then the, uh, let me see, I cannot read, so I have to read here. <laughs> okay, so, <laughs> for the first part is about the uh, Taiwanese uh, domestic factors, <laughs> and uh, I operationalize all those factors as Taiwanese leaders' party position and Taiwan's dependence on uh, China's economy and Taiwan's deterrence and uh, defense power and so on and so forth. <clears throat> so then what I, what I did is uh, along the timeline, I would put all those important events that represent uh, the varies of those variables uh, uh, along uh, the t uh, this period of time. <clears throat> so for example, uh, the first one, for example, at the top of it, is the, uh, the DPP's former <coughs> president candidate, Frank Shea, agreed with President Ma that the cross-strait relations is not international. <clears throat> uh, or the, sec the second one is that the, uh, 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 the, uh, the DPP caucus, Huip, Ke uh, Jiaming, call for the party to freeze independence charter uh, of the uh, of DPP. <clears throat> All these are important events that represent a vary or a, a, a change in terms of the particular variables that mentioned in the analytical framework. <clears throat> uh, because as long as there is a variable, if the variable doesn't vary, then the variable will not have any influence on the dependent variables. So we have to uh, find out when and in what way and to what extent that particular variable actually varies. So uh, what, I, what I did is try to uh, mark down all the uh, events that will certainly happen in the future uh, 
uh, along that particular variable. <coughs> and then I will put down those uh, events that may happen or is quite possible to happen in the near future. <coughs> and then uh, along the timeline, and then you put all these three categories of variables together and put all the uh, events uh, the, uh, according to the operation, operationalization of those variables. And then you will have these uh, big tables. <coughs> and then the funny thing is that uh, the, if, uh, it is not illustrated uh, very properly here in this particular illustration in this table. But uh, uh, on the computer or uh, in front of a, a group of experts, <laughs> when we discuss about this event, event and try to come up with the predictions, <laughs> then this, uh, what we call a future events chart, can be very, very helpful. Because we start to come up and down uh, among all those different factors, and then we start to have some kind of synergies <laughs> of how those uh, events might interact with, uh, with each other or against each other. <laughs> and then what scenarios uh, <coughs> may develop out of a particular event, <clears throat> and then how that particular scenario will be influenced by the later uh, events that surely to happen, <coughs> or po quite possible to happen. And then we, uh, from that kind of exercise, we will be able to come up with several different uh, 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 scenario analysis about what the uh, future may look like. <coughs> So, uh, and, and one of the things that uh, we pay particular attention to is what if 2016, uh, the DPP leaders, especially uh, uh, Ms. Tsai Ing-wen, uh, was elected as the president of, uh, of Taiwan. What that particular trigger <laughs> would trigger uh, a series of events uh, along the timeline? <coughs> Uh, the, uh, one of the scenarios that we came up is that uh, Tsai Ing-wen, after, uh, after she was elected as the uh, president, he might have to do something <coughs> to demonstrate that he's a little bit different <coughs> from the previous uh, President Ma. <coughs> uh, he will act uh, to demonstrate that he's a little bit more pro-independent uh, than President Ma. <coughs> But, however, when uh, the DPP government tried to do this, uh, uh, she or he uh, must, uh, in the expectation that uh, this particular move is not going to irritate China too much, to the extent that Chinese leader is compelled to react uh, in a very negative and assertive way. <coughs> uh, however, what may happen along the, the scenario analysis is that exactly about that the same time, uh, China is going to have a very important uh, national congress <coughs> uh, meetings. <coughs> and, uh, uh, and Xi Jinping's crackdown on domestic uh, high rank officers and his political enemies will be in the highest peak uh, at that time. So he is under the pressures not to give in <coughs> in the uh, cross trade relations uh, and therefore, he is, com uh, he is uh, compelled to react in a much more assertive way than Tsai Ing-wen uh, would originally expect it. And then, uh, in that way, then it will start to trigger a series of negative uh, interactions between the two. And then what will happen is that exactly during that period of time, uh, the, the military readiness uh, in Taiwan is not in its best shape because uh, the, uh, uh, in the early 2017, <coughs> there will be a dramatic change in the mil military structures. Uh, the, the military will uh, change to a, volu a totally uh, voluntary system. <coughs> and so for that part of time, it will be is, it will be probably one of the uh, weakest point uh, in terms of uh, Taiwan's military readiness. <clears throat> and then, if you take a look of what the United States might do uh, at that time, it's also 
a political uh, important moment uh, in the United States because uh, they are also facing uh, the next round of the uh, presidential elections. <clears throat> and so uh, this is one of the scenarios we should pay a great attention to. What I'm trying to say is that uh, things may not go worse, uh, uh, the, uh, but if all these uh, factors happen to uh, the uh, turn to the to the worst, and at that particular time, then what I believe is that the mainland China. Uh, my conclusion is that the mainland China's expectation that a much hostile leaders may be selected uh, by the Taiwanese voters in the 26th, uh, 16th, and in the future, I may actually force Chinese leaders uh, the uh, the. Uh, uh, to compromise more with the current uh, Taiwanese leaders. <laughs> so actually, uh, the ironic thing is that because the Chinese leader is expecting uh, a worse situation in the future, for example, in, uh, after the uh, 2016, so actually uh, for the next 12 months or something, it may be, a, uh, ironically, it may be a good chance for Taiwan to uh, convince the Chinese leaders uh, to give in more, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to compromise more uh, on the negotiation table. <clears throat> However, uh, the, uh, the political linkage between cross-strait relations and the uh, respective domestic politics, especially to uh, uh, the uh, Taiwan's uh, presidential election, then uh, can be a very powerful factor that will influence the future of the relations. And, and if the previous uh, scenarios that I just mentioned happened, then although we will have, we pretty much will have uh, windows of opportunities to now and, uh, and the end of March second term, but after that, after that, uh, there is a high possibility that China uh, will pressure Taiwan in a major way, if things turn to the worst. And then uh, at that time, Taiwan will find itself uh, uh, less support by the United States. And also, uh, uh, from the military points of view, it's less prepared. And so, although I don't believe that there will be a total uh, military solution uh, between Taiwan and China, it is very, very extremely unlikely uh, for the Chinese leaders to, uh, to go for the military solution uh, uh, the, against Taiwan, uh, because it's extremely difficult. But uh, I believe that uh, for the first part of 2017, uh, and even all the way up to the second part of 2017, uh, Taiwan may have to confront with a very difficult time economically, politically or even militar militarily. <laughs> and so uh, if uh, certainly uh, this is just a warning and I hope that uh, as long as we know that there is a cliff and then uh, we will always be able to do something to avoid to fall down uh, uh, along the uh, in, into the cliffs. <laughs> and as long as you you uh, manipulate the things in the right way, turn to the right turn, and then uh, things uh, will be prevented. And I think that's the, uh, the, the main purpose for me and try to use this particular analytical framework and try to come up with a warning of why, what may happen uh, after 2016. And uh, I think I will uh, uh, tentatively stop here and see if there is any uh, questions from the audience. Thank you, thank you very much. <laughs>